Hi, I'm James on the Smart Things product team, and I'd like to take a few minutes today to talk about some recent changes and additions to the Smart Things mobile app. Especially for people that have been using Smart Things for some time, there's quite a bit new. We've heard a few questions uh, since we released the app that I'd like to answer. One, where are the smart apps that I've configured in the past and how do I change settings for those? Two, how do I change modes and what's Hello Home all about? And three, the new dashboard. How do I set that up? And does it change what I've done in the past? So we're going to visit each of those things one by one. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the questions that we've heard from existing SmartThings customers are, uh, as they got started with the new SmartThings mobile app, was where are my smart apps that I've configured in the past? I have quite a few set up and I'm not sure where they are, how they relate to the dashboard. So let's spend a couple of minutes looking at, uh, at that specifically. When you open up the SmartThings mobile app, you may start on the dashboard and you can quickly switch to your apps, which are still there and still work exactly as you've set them up in the past uh, using the left menu. You can access the left menu by tapping the three bars in the upper left hand corner of the app. You can switch from the dashboard to a things view, which is the traditional things view that you're already familiar with. It works exactly like it has in the past, but also to the apps view where you have a tile based view of any of the smart apps that you've configured and installed in the past. Ones that you're able to tap to control, tap to execute, will have a small play icon on them. In the upper right hand corner you can see that I have one installed. It was the big turn off smart app and uh, it turns off several of the lights and I can tap that play button at any time and we'll go ahead and execute that smart app. Also I have a few others. I have uh, a couple related to receiving notifications when people come or go from home. And I have uh, an alert set up for if I leave the front door open for too long. With all of these, I can simply tap. I'm going to go ahead and tap on front door open to see the preferences and settings for that smart app. And I can change them and I can update them just as I have in the past. You can also uninstall these at will. And we'll talk a little bit about why you might want to do that as we look at the dashboard. Let's talk about modes for a moment. Um, if you tap on the three bars in the upper left hand corner to access the left menu, uh, this is a great way of switching between sections of the app, but it's also a great way to check to see what mode smart things in your home are running in at any given time. And right now, my current mode is set to home. It's very easy to change uh, in this version of the, of the smart things app, my mode at any time. And we've introduced a, a new feature called Hello Home, which makes it quite easy. In the upper right hand corner throughout the app, you'll see a, a small chat icon and you can tap that to enter Hello Home at any time. Hello Home gives me access to messages from my home in a familiar messaging format, uh, notifications about uh, people coming or going or doors opening or closing. But it also allows me to choose actions that I want my home to take. Actions can turn lights on and off or unlock or lock doors, but actions can also change modes. And in fact, I'll tap change mode and more to look at the actions that are already there. There are three or four actions by default that are there to change modes for you. Good morning, which will, uh, will put you in home mode. Good night, which will put you into night mode. And I'm uh, goodbye, which will put you into away mode. And at any time, you can tap any of these actions. I'll go ahead and say good night, and the action will be performed. In this case, you see a confirmation. I changed the mode from home to night as you requested, and I did some other things for you as well. I can change mode again. I'll go ahead and say goodbye, and I get confirmation that the mode has been changed from night to away as was requested. So these actions are very flexible and powerful. At any time I can tap the gear in the lower right hand corner to see a list of actions. And using that list of actions I can change what they do. Um, I'll look at good morning as a for instance. You can see what do you want to happen when you use the good morning action uh, and choose what lights you want to turn on or off or if you want to change the thermostat very easily. 
a lot of these things were possible in, pr in the previous version of the SmartThings mobile app, but took a lot longer to find and configure, and we've consolidated it and gathered it all together in one place for you. Additionally, under additional settings, you can choose how you want the good morning action to be performed automatically. This is really powerful. Um, for instance, I can automatically use the good morning action when there's motion in the bedroom or in the upstairs area between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. and cause all, all sorts of things around the home to happen. So uh, the dashboard is starting empty, um, and that allows you to uh, set it up in the way that works best for you. Um, in this case, I've got a couple of smart apps that I've set up in the past for knowing if people are coming and going, knowing, knowing if people are coming and going from home, but I can set that up in home and family instead, and there are some benefits to doing that. We've tried to make it as easy as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the gear for home and family on the right. And here is where I can stay connected with family. I've got a few existing presence devices, a SmartSense presence tag in a car, and a couple of mobile phones being used for presence devices as well. But rather than set those all up from scratch, I'm just going to tap Auto Import Existing Presence Devices. And this feature is specifically for our longtime SmartThings customers uh, that already have some of these devices set up. Here I can select which devices I want to import uh, by tapping and selecting those and then hit next, and it will go ahead and perform that import. I'll give it just a moment, I get a confirmation, and now all of those presence tags are reflected in Home and Family. I could go ahead and hit done right now, and you'll see that the Home and Family section of the dashboard is now populating with presence information. I know at a glance that everybody is present, um, and I can swipe left and right on the dashboard cards to see recent activity, when people arrived, when people departed. Additionally, I mentioned that I have a couple of alerts set up for when people come or go. I can tap the gear for home and family once again, and I can see a list of, the, of, of my uh, family members and cars that I have presence devices attached to. Uh, and if I want to set up an alert, I can simply tap on, for instance, Cindy, and get notified when Cindy comes or goes, and choose which events I want to be notified for. And under more options, whether I want those notifications only during certain times or only when my mode is set to a certain, uh, a certain mode. Now that I've set up Home and Family by importing all of my presence devices and I can see that activity, let's visit a couple of more sections of the dashboard to see how that works elsewhere. I'm going to skip over to Lights and Switches. And again, tap the gear on the right of the lights and switches row to go ahead and access the settings for lights and switches. Here, because I'm an existing SmartThings customer, I can go ahead and auto import the switches that I've connected in the past. I don't have to connect them again. I'm going to tap that option, select the switches by tapping that row that I want to import, and tap next. It's going to go ahead and import all four of those switches into the lights and switches section of the dashboard. I'll get a quick confirmation. I hit next. There they are on the list. I'm going to tap done real quick to return to the dashboard to see the result of that activity. Here I've got the lights and switches portion of the dashboard live showing me information about my, the lights and switches right now, whether they're on or off. And these are controls. I can go ahead and tap these shortcuts to turn things on or off. I'll tap the blue hat light to turn it on. I'll tap the kid's bathroom light to turn that on. And I can use the double arrow just below the gear to expand this view and see the other shortcuts for my lights and switches that I've just set up. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse that. I can swipe left and right on the cards and see additional information about the lights and what they've done recently. I'm going to visit the settings for lights and switches once again by tapping the gear and I'm going to visit the star lamp as an example of the power of the dashboard. It's taken a lot of the things that people have done with lights and switches using many different smart apps and consolidated them and brought them together into one easy to use section of the app which is the dashboard here. For my star lamp I can choose to have it turn on when there's motion and off when the motion stops. I can have it turn on when something opens and off when it closes. 
I can have it act on a schedule, and I can also uh, determine what icon I want to use and other sorts of uh, options, and rename it to other sorts of options for this light. One of the great benefits of the dashboard and lights and switches in particular is not just control of individual switches, but control of groups of lights and switches. So just as a quick example, I'm going to add a new lighter switch. I can see that I can name this as a group. I'm going to say kitchen lights as an example. I'll tap next. I've created this new group and I can choose which switches are part of kitchen lights. Just as a demonstration, I'm going to choose all of my lights and hit next. I can again set rules that apply to all of those lights now. Tap done and on the dashboard I will have a new shortcut for the kitchen lights that I can tap and control all of those lights with one tap if I choose to do so. One more section to visit, doors and locks. If you recall earlier, I have a smart app set up to let me know if my front door has been left open for more than five minutes. And rather than use a smart app, I'm going to go ahead and set that up on the dashboard instead. I'm going to create my first door. I'm going to call it front door. I'm going to tap the alert me if it's left open or closed option. I'm going to tap to connect the sensor or choose the sensor that I'm going to use. It's the front door multi. In order to know that information, I want a notification when the door is open for more than five minutes. That sounds great. I want to receive a push notification. That's wonderful. And under more options, I have the ability to say that I only want to receive that notification when I am away. So I'll go ahead and make that selection. Tap next. I'll receive helpful tips about placement of the sensors on the door if I need them. I'll tap done. And we're all set. The doors and locks section of the dashboard now shows me information about the current state of my doors. Front door is closed. I can swipe left and right to see historical information about the door opening and closing and I will also receive that alert. Because I've set it up in the dashboard, on apps, I can go and uninstall the front door open smart app because I don't need it anymore. Just by tapping uninstall at the bottom and we're all done. So now that you've set up all of the sections of your dashboard, you can visit the smart apps that you've installed in the past and remove any that might be duplicates. And if you have any questions, visit us at smartthings.com, read our blog, or chat with our support team anytime. Thanks.